let's uh, talk to uh, NHS bro uh, uh, GP and broadcaster Dr. Rene Hunderkamp. Hi, Rene. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for joining us. Let's remind ourselves of what uh, Nigel Farage told Julia Hartley Brewer on talk earlier about who, as in the World Health Organization. You, know, you give away power to people that can make huge decisions over your life, you can't vote for, you can't hold to account in debate, and you can't actually vote to remove. But here's the worst of this. So over 100,000 people signed a petition to say, let's have a debate on this subject in Parliament. Guess what? The Petitions Committee threw it out. There has been no debate. And the government have said they will not change their position on membership of the World Health Organization. Uh, that's uh, Nigel Farage there. So, Rene, uh, only a week ago, it emerged that actually Britain was uh, resisting this agreement. They call it the Lockdown Treaty, uh, the World Health Organization's uh, pandemic agreement, but it's nicknamed the Lockdown Treaty, and you can see why. Mm. Because, of course, the World Health Organization loves lockdowns. It wants to take that decision away from the sovereign British government, whether or not we have a lockdown again. I hope we don't, because everybody knows lockdowns don't work. Uh, and uh, also wants us to uh, donate 20% uh, of all our medical defences to the international e effort. And most most worrying of all, wants to ban us from uh, stockpiling vaccines for our own citizens. Uh, Nigel Farage is right, isn't he? Wouldn't we be better off without the Health, World Health Organization? Well, I think we'd definitely be better off without the World Health Organization, which is now just another massive quango with loads of people being paid fortunes of money and we don't actually know what they do. This treaty has actually been under discussion now for several years. Some of us have been writing to our MP for years and mine, Mike Freer, just writes back to me every single time and says we would never cede sovereignty. But, Kevin, <laughs> they absolutely refuse to tell us who is doing the negotiation on the behalf of the UK. They absolutely refuse to, to show us the text that they're using to do that negotiation. So I don't think the British are pushing back on this at all. They just are a bit unhappy that we found out about it. It's a complex document. And to be fair, about three weeks ago, they actually amended everything and they watered down many of the um, parts of it that we were really worried about. But, but fear not, there's still plenty in there that means that they will take power from sovereign countries if they need to. They're working to a basis that everything they did for COVID was right. So COVID ah. is proving the blueprint for any future pandemic planning. Yeah. They're working to the basis that the general, the director general, as we know, is Ted Dross, who is not a doctor, who was put in place really by the Chinese, who have the major stake of power in the WHO, that he would actually have the overarching decision making at his fingertips should anything happen in the future like COVID again. Yeah, it, There's plenty. Indeed. I mean, didn't the uh, last pandemic, the COVID crisis, Rene, uh, prove that sovereign nations are better at handling their own situation than some kind of united effort? <clears throat> uh, our uh, uh, battle to beat the virus was far more successful than the EU's because we made our own decisions. I mean, uh, internationalising what surely should be local decisions is just a mistake. It's absolutely a mistake. And you just need to look around the world at the different countries that do different things and have different outcomes. And you need to learn from those. We don't need to hand more power over to an unelected body that, frankly, is working at the behest, possibly, of one of the superpowers of the world mm. that has a vested interest in controlling us. And actually, at the end of the day, what happens here if we agree to this? Not only do we cede sovereignty, whatever the MPs want to say, and there are now MPs waking up to this, but we also give another great big tranche of money to the World Health Organization. Our fees go up dramatically. So the World Health Organization gets about three billion pounds a year from contributing countries. It will go up to 82 billion. <laughs> and their biggest fear is Trump getting into power because he will tear this up the moment he gets in, Kevin, because he doesn't want this quango taking over his country's sovereignty either. Well, here's, here's to uh, Donald. And, uh, I mean, don't forget that the lockdowns were a Chinese invention. Uh, as you say, the World Health Organization, which basically is a 
poodle that does what China tells it to. Uh, yeah. You know, to the World Health Organization was the one that told us, don't uh, pay any attention to those ludicrous conspiracy theories about the Chinese inventing the virus themselves. It came from these wet markets with these creatures. That's how it happened. Yeah. Well, that's been discredited now. Uh, and uh, they basically do what China tells them. And China said, uh, when the COVID crisis erupted, oh, you've got to lock down. Uh, preferably, uh, according to China, we'd weld all our doors doors shut like they did to their people the world health yeah. organization does uh, just what china tells it to and it passed on china's policies to an unsuspecting world in the last uh, covid crisis didn't it it absolutely did and as with all of these bodies they're not interested in individuals they're not interested in you and me kevin and how well we live our lives they're just interested in power and yep. a power grab and doing what they're told to do by their paymasters Absolutely, and uh, we were talking about the power of nightmares earlier. Rishi Sunak trying to scare the pants off us about the next five terrifying years. Well, uh, the World Health health organization has been trying to terrify us into doing what it says for many years now and i think it's time to draw the line renee always a pleasure to talk to you